In ancient times, the sky was seen as a perfect clock. Stars and planets moved along fixed trajectories, repeating the same movements yearly. Any change in this apparent harmony, it was believed, must also have effects on Earth. The sudden appearance of a comet or lunar and solar eclipses was particularly suspicious. It was regularly suspected that approaching comets caused earthquakes, especially large ones. Even today, many believe that the position of the Sun, Moon, and even the other planets in our solar system can cause earthquakes on Earth. However, part of this belief is absolutely to be excluded. The gravitational attraction of the other planets, even the largest, is indeed too weak to cause an earthquake, as demonstrated by the famous event in March of 1982, when all the planets aligned, or almost, relative to Earth without causing any effects. Not even if all the planets were aligned together could they influence the balance of our faults, not even the most sensitive ones. In short, the planets are too far away to cause trouble. But there seems to be some truth in the belief that the Moon can cause seismic activity. By studying the frequency of large earthquakes in Chile, California, and Japan, researchers have discovered that earthquakes greater than 5 are more likely to occur during the new or full Moon when the Sun, Moon, and Earth align. But wait a second. If this were true, it would mean that all the more reason a solar eclipse a phenomena for which the Moon and Sun must be perfectly aligned could unleash the perfect storm, capable of disrupting the Earth's surface at its weakest points. And right now, while the entire North American continent is in feverish anticipation of the April 8th eclipse, a bunch of rumors have started circulating based on these evaluations, suggesting the possibility that the cosmic event could even destabilize the balance in the so-called New Madrid Fault with the consequent devastation of a territory that experienced the fury of a very violent earthquake many years ago. And wouldn't you know it, the earthquake in the winter between 1811 and 1812 was preceded by a total solar eclipse, and also by another particular astronomical phenomena that is also recurring. Just a coincidence? Audio jump. The year 1811 began with a spectacle that not many humans are lucky enough to see in their lifetime. A great comet was sighted in March of 1811. Initially faint as it approached the Sun, its intensity increased more and more rapidly, so much so that some records report that it had a tail more than 30 degrees long and a head larger than the disk of the Sun. Its brightness reached its peak in October of 1811, when it certainly became the most spectacular comet ever seen in human memory. It was still pre-scientific times for much of the world's population, and the appearance of this extraordinary object, which was the same comet described by Tolstoy in War and Peace, was a cause for great concern. What great misfortunes would it bring? In Europe, it was already announcing the invasion of Russia by Napoleon's troops, and to increase fear in North America, on September 17th of the same year, the United States, including the New Madrid region, a town located in the southeastern part of Missouri, was affected by an impressive annular solar eclipse. Coincidence or not, two months later in mid-December, the first of three extraordinary earthquakes struck the Midwest and southern United States. An invisible force gripped the entire central Mississippi Valley and did not loosen its grip for weeks. A series of large earthquakes caused the riverbed to rise and fall as if it were a stormy sea. On December 16, 1811, at 2 in the morning, the first shock hit what is now the southern appendix of the state of Missouri. Residents woke up feeling furniture bouncing and porcelain plates shattering. Houses were shifting from their foundations. People poured into the streets and remained there, trembling from the cold and the aftershocks. Their once quiet and safe homes had suddenly become dangerous. In the hours leading up to dawn, the earthquake continued to tremble, albeit with less intensity. At around 7 o'clock, there was another violent shock. Then, around 11, there was another even stronger one. Holes opened up in the ground, from which mud, water, and coal gushed forth. Sulfurous gas emanated from underground, contaminating the air with its foul smell. Less intense tremors continued until January of 1812. On the morning of January 23rd, around 9 o'clock, another strong earthquake struck. But it wasn't over yet. 
the disaster continued to strike the region. On February 7, 1812, before dawn, the restless sleep of the inhabitants of that area was again interrupted by tremendous seismic waves. This earthquake, more violent than all the previous ones, was so strong that the fury of the earthquake poured onto the river city of New Madrid. Already the tremors of 1811 had severely damaged the small town, killing several inhabitants and forcing the majority of survivors to leave. The shock of February 7th was the final blow. When the earthquake struck, the remaining people fled, barely making it out in time. The elevated bank on which the city stood crumbled and slid into the Mississippi where the turbulent waters swept away the boards, bricks, and stones of New Madrid. In a short time, there was no trace left of the city. The earthquakes caused temporary waterfalls on the river near New Madrid, capsizing dozens of boats. The February 7th shock lifted and sank the ground, forcing the flow of the Mississippi to reverse. Huge chasms opened beneath the river, creating whirlpools that sucked in other boats. The earthquakes altered the course of the river, flooding towns and swaths of land. Additionally, they diverted the waters, giving rise to Real Foot Lake in Tennessee, which did not exist before 1812. The tremor lasted for 15 minutes, and needless to say, even brick and stone houses collapsed to their foundations for miles around. St. Louis and Louisville suffered severe damage. Aftershocks tormented the area for days. Out of a population of about 15,000 inhabitants in the affected area, more than 1,000 people were killed, and at least 5,000 found themselves homeless. The still young United States had never experienced a disaster of such magnitude. Hang on guys, before we continue, be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell, you will help us to make products of even higher quality. It's not possible to establish the exact magnitude of these earthquakes, as seismographs did not exist in 1812, but scientists estimate that at least three of the new Madrid earthquakes measured on the Richter scale would have had a magnitude greater than eight. These are the most intense earthquakes ever observed in the continental United States and globally rank among the strongest ever recorded. But those who suffered the most from these earthquakes were the Native Americans and we have no good senses of them, but they were far more numerous than the white settlers, so there were probably several thousand Native Americans living in this region. Where Helena, Arkansas stands today, there was a tribe, and during the earthquakes the ground sank, flooding their village, and not everyone survived. Many drowned near Osceola, Arkansas, and there was a second Indian village that they were aware of that sank into the ground. Unfortunately, there is practically no written history of what the Native Americans experienced during this horrible natural disaster. Local Indians had an oral history of great earthquakes occurring within the memories of their elders, but geologists say that no one in their tribes would have ever experienced anything remotely similar. Okay, this is the account of what happened more than two centuries ago, but why are so many people now afraid of the possibility that it could happen again now? Well, it essentially comes down to two things, a rational suggestion and probabilistic assessment. Let me explain further. The suggestion comes from the fact that the earthquakes of 1811-1812 were preceded by celestial phenomena that have always been perceived as signs of misfortune. Over two months in September and October of 1811, a blazing comet and a curious annular solar eclipse materialized in the sky over the central eastern United States terribly unusual and threatening things for those who did not yet have a clear understanding of the scientific concept of the solar system. Something unpleasant therefore had to necessarily happen, and indeed shortly thereafter, the wrath of God or who knows what else came to disrupt the lives of those poor souls. Well, whether you believe it or not, the same celestial signs from two centuries ago are once again materializing over North America. In just a few days on April 8th, the so-called total solar eclipse of the century will occur, with the shadow cone crossing Mexico, the United States and Canada also passing over the territories of New Madrid devastated by the earthquakes of the early 19th century. An extraordinary eclipse with totality in some parts of North America exceeding four minutes. But today we lack the comet, somebody among you will say. And yet, no, because there will be one. In fact, the Pondsbrooks comet is already moving in the sky 
a lot less brighter than the Great Comet of 1811, but still visible to the naked eye. And there's much more. The Pons Brooks Comet is a periodic one that approaches the Sun and the Earth about every 70 years, which means that in the winter of 1811-1812, three orbits ago, the Pons Brooks was shining, along with the other one, above the ruins left by the earthquakes. A truly fantastic coincidence, don't you think? So that's about the suggestions. As for what pertains to probabilistic assessment, People convinced that an earthquake will surely follow the eclipse of April 8th are based on the fact that not a few scientists estimate that in New Madrid, an earthquake of magnitude greater than 7.5 on the Richter scale could occur every 200 to 300 years, and many therefore point out that 223 years have already passed since 1811. Seismologists also calculate a probability of 25 to 40 percent that another severe earthquake, magnitude 6 or higher, will occur in the New Madrid seismic zone by 2040, with significant damage and loss of life. So, putting the two things together as we await the eclipse, the catastrophic drift is mounting more and more on social media. Okay, but what do the experts say? Do they deny it and laugh it off? Well, not all of them. The majority are obviously against it, but some admit that there may be some kind of relationship between the perfect alignment of the moon and the sun and the imbalance of a fault capable of triggering seismic activity. The alignment, according to some, can put a strain on fault systems located along the path of the lunar shadow, such as the region of the New Madrid Fault. The effect is, as researchers also admit, extremely weak and more likely to act only on shallow faults. Only one earthquake out of 10,000 occurring during a period of increased tidal stress will be influenced and ultimately significantly increase in magnitude. So although there remains a tiny percentage of risk, it is very unlikely that the great eclipse of April 8th will bring death and destruction, but only wonder of a miracle of nature that periodically returns to give us emotions. Just that, and nothing more.